what is the Ark of the Covenant? If you look into biblical text, for example, mm-hmm. there was this Ark that Moses stole. He took, he had this box. He claimed it was given to him by God, but I think he stole it from the Egyptians. That's why they fled after him. An Ark. Yeah, so it's this box with these cherubims on it, but these cherubims are really, a, it's really a capacitor. This It generates a lot of electricity. Inside of this box is something that has so much radiation, that's what it looks like there, that you had to have on specific type of clothing, which is well described even in the Bible, mm-hmm. rubber boots, gloves, this type of suit with this breastplate of metal on it. To This is all to prevent the radiation poisoning. When somebody didn't have it on in the Bible and they touched the ark, they would become very sick. Their hair would fall out. Their nose would bleed. Their eyes would bleed. Their fingernails would fall off. Radiation sickness. This thing was generating some type of radiation power, some type of a, a generator of, of power of some sort. Um, and it was connected to the Great Pyramid. It was in that box. Evidence for this for me, that box has a gigantic piece of the granite missing off one corner, like an explosion happened from inside the box. Mm-hmm. If you look across the Grand Gallery, I'm sorry, across the King's Chamber, there's a wall about maybe 30 feet away. The impact from that giant piece of granite that snapped off, it cut that granite on the wall, the exact shape of that corner piece. Wow. Something explosive happened there. For you to throw a piece of granite that heavy that far and impact that way, so there was energy in there. Now, if you go back to the story of Moses, it really was Pharaoh Akhenaten. Moses is not the real name. That's the made-up name. Pharaoh Akhenaten, who was ushering in monotheism in Egypt while he was a pharaoh, worshiping Amen-Ra, the great Amen. Amen-Ra was one of these Anunnaki people said, look, from now on, there'll be no other God but me. That made it into the Bible. When you say thanks, you give, you say thanks to me, you say amen. That made it into the Bible. Teach the people only to worship me, not any of my other relatives. I'm the only one and true God. And he began to do that. Then he made an order to go to start defacing all the hieroglyphs and all of these statues around Egypt. That's why the noses and the ears are chipped off. That's why the faces are chipped off everywhere you go. Bodies are chipped away. It wasn't done. The hypothesis on the streets is that it was done because white people back then didn't want black people to know that there were black people in Egypt. That's actually false. The true reality is this was done in ancient times and it was carried on by Coptic Christians long before Jesus was even born. They were still following that same monotheistic religion and to them it was offensive to have these faces of all these gods around because it's only one true and only one God, the great Amen. And that's why all these things were done. Hmm. But Moses, when he was kicked out, so they said, look, this guy has to go. We got to get him out of here. They kicked him out of Egypt. They kicked the Pharaoh out of Egypt. He went and he took that ark out of the Great Pyramid and he fled with his new followers. They weren't slaves. They were followers of Akhenaten. They crossed the Sea of Reeds, not the Red Sea, which they tell you in the Bible. Nobody ever crossed the Red Sea. It's a mistranslation by accident on purpose. And then when the Pharaoh realized the power source of Egypt had been stolen, the new Pharaoh, they sent the, you know, sent the chariots after him and everything else.